Hello and welcome to The Actor and the Engineer. My name is Paul James. I am the actor. My name is Josh Knapp. I'm the broadcast engineer. Here we go, Josh. Wow. Deadpool and Wolverine. I thought it was Deadpool <laughs> versus Wolverine for a while, but which, I mean, it is Deadpool versus Wolverine, but then it's also Deadpool and Wolverine. So kind of glad they called it and Wolverine, but better than Deadpool 2 or Deadpool 3 or whatever, you know. Because wasn't the I think the second one was called just Deadpool Two. Just Deadpool Two, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, what are you gonna do? How'd you like it? I think it's clever. I think it's funny. I think they're smart. I think the way that they have. And by the way, there's no way to talk about this movie without spoilers. There's just not. Uh, it's probably true. Okay. It's yeah. Well, I think first of all, right. I don't yeah. want to. I want to be able to talk about the spoilers. And you know yeah. me, I'm not going to be able to hold my tongue. So I'm just letting everybody know now. Go see it before you listen. If you have seen it, it's great. Yes. Uh, please listen. If not, I would see it first. I've been avoiding everything online for the first three me days too. when it came out. And then, man, people are just letting it out now. There is. I are mean, they? Okay. Yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, and it's are, been like six days. It's been up for like six days. That's so, fair. Yeah, that's that's fair. I guess a week sounds about right. But like, I mean, I, first time I saw it was Sunday, and then everybody was excited, and everybody was whooping and hollering in the in the theater on in certain parts. And then, you know, I saw it again last night, and same same thing. You know, on a Tuesday night, so it was. The, people are getting to it, but it, it's also doing really well in the theaters. So. Yeah, I mean, that's good. I, I hate to say that it's the savior of, of movies because no no one movie can be the savior of all movies. But um, but it, it's on top of other things, Twisters and things like that, which I thought Twisters did a little bit better than it is doing. But it's a solid outing for a movie like that. But this is just even bigger. So it's well, kind of... Yeah. Side, this is co sort of a sidetrack. We've sort of talked about this before. We've talked about the fact that I've rotated around the sun almost six decades now, and uh, you see patterns. And we've talked about VHS is going to ruin movies, DVD is going to ruin movies, stream is going to ruin movies. We've been through all of this. It cycles its way through. Now, COVID, COVID ruined movies. Nobody's going back to the theaters. And then Oppenheimer and Barbie happened. Now, Wicked and Gladiator 2 is happening. And now, Deadpool and Twisters. And it just is secular. It just is. Inside Out 2. Inside That's Out 2. They're all doing very well. And so. <laughs> I, 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 will the big multiplex with 300 people in it ever come back? I don't know. And I'm, I'm kind of okay with that because it's too big. It's too much. It's too many people. And the, the crowd size is just right now. In my opinion, it was in, mm -hmm. I saw it in one of the larger theaters where I live and it was just right. So I feel fine. The movies are going to be fine. I mean, I'm not invested yeah. in movies. I'm not making billions of dollars or millions of dollars off of movies, so I don't know. It's not personally affecting me, but I, I think it's a trend. It dipped down. Now it's going to dip back up. What I think they need to do is incorporate quiet theaters into regular theaters, stuff like the Alamo Draft House. Oh, does yeah. on a regular basis do okay 645 regular theater uh 715 um silent theater just like a silent car in the subway that kind of stuff because yeah it can be distracting the phones can be distracting they yeah the when, eye, when you're talking about phones yeah yeah that's it but i would hate to, to be like no you cannot cheer during this part of the movie well type of a i thing. mean if, i i think kind of hard but if you're going to Alamo and people cheer, are they going to get in trouble? No. No. It's, it's the people who are like, hey, Betty, will you pull out the steaks so we can have French fries and steaks when we get home? And literally, that's almost verbatim <laughs> a conversation I heard once. Wow. I mean, it wasn't mm. Betty and it wasn't steaks. It was something hamburger meat or something. And I was like, really? Right in the middle of the movie, this is when you choose <laughs> to call your wife or whoever Betty is to say, take out the hamburger meat because you forgot to do it? Wow. And then calls them back to make sure they have enough fries because I could stop by and pick up fries on the way home. Oh, geez. Loud enough for somebody to hear. And it's just, it's getting to the point where I'm either aging out of patience mm -hmm. <laughs> of with people, and that might be part of it. Get off my yard. Um, yeah. That might be part of it, but uh, that's week 
we commented on that for um, Quiet Place day one yeah. where everybody was silent. Everybody was very respectful during this yeah. movie. It was, it was courtesy. Yeah. yeah. And everybody was respectful during Deadpool. There was one guy mm-hmm. who kept pulling up his phone. The light was muted or dimmed so it wasn't mm-hmm. so bright. But I kept thinking to myself, because it would draw my eye, um, I kept thinking to myself, what is so important that for two hours you can't not text? I don't, I can't comprehend it. That's probably it's, age more than anything. I think it's main character syndrome, though, because we are our own main characters and nobody it, it used to be you are like a part of a group. And now everybody's their own main characters. They watch exactly what they want to watch when they want to watch. They have a phone on them that answers any questions that they want to get answered when they want to get them answered. You never have to wait for anything. Da, 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 da. You can. I'm not I'm not excusing it and I'm not saying that, you know, it should be harder for people to just sit in a in a movie theater for two and a half hours and watch a screen. I mean, that's a pretty low bar to 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 go over. That's like in in Bullet Train, you know, when uh when they're they're having a fight in the quiet car. So, right, right, right. Directed yeah. by David Leach, who directed Deadpool too. Um, there you go. So wow. he was Six gonna direct this movie. Kevin Bacon, dude. Very there you good. go. He was yeah. gonna direct this movie. Um, and he ended up, uh, picking free guy so that he did the, uh, the Ryan Gosling movie. Um, and so they have Sean Levy as the director who's worked with Ryan Reynolds three times. I think, I think they worked on Adam project, which wasn't that good and a couple other movies, but, um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I, I think that the, the, main thrust of this movie pun intended is ryan reynolds and so it's kind of like without ryan reynolds even though there are other writers and all that stuff it's like it's kind of like this whole thing wouldn't have really fermented and and grown to what it is without ryan reynolds so and and i'm i like ryan reynolds so i know people some people may think that he's annoying but like it's i i like that kind of humor that's kind of like my kind of cynical humor so i mean i'm i'm on board but uh, it, did, I, it did have a couple questions as far as like, for me, we've talked about this before and we even talked recently, I think off the podcast about like vibe movies and movies that, that I try, I'm tr- when I try to like describe them or when we talk about something like Tenet, it's like you can get bogged down in the, the minutia of the story or you can just like feel the vibe of the movie and ride it like a wave. And Tenet is one of those movies for me where it's like there's just enough there that makes sense and I can grab onto it and I can just keep keep trucking along. And I think these Deadpool movies in general and this one especially is very much a vibe movie. You just kind of like move from thing to thing to thing and when you start really like analyzing it, you can be like, wait, but that doesn't work there. That doesn't make sense here. And then you're just kind of like, oh, you know, I've gone cross-eyed. So it, it's a, it's one of those things that I'm okay with, but I can see other people maybe not, not jiving with it. But did you get any of those feelings or were you just kind of? No, I, I, I believe in riding the roller coaster. I believe in the vibe movie. I believe that Tenet is not a vibe movie. I believe that uh. Tenet is something more than that. And by the way, side note, if we get distracted into other conversations, it's kind of par for the course with Deadpool because he goes into a thousand million different directions. Oh, yeah. And that's a bit of a criticism for me. That's mm-hmm. it, it, They need to tone it down a little bit. The the innuendos, the comments, the the yeah. quips, it's all well, the time. And it's that they was... try to bring levity to it. Uh, not levity. They try to bring balance to it with the more serious scenes. But tonally, it was interrupting. Like when Hugh Jackman brings such depth. And uh, I, I like things like why the yellow and blue costume is being worn not just because Mm -hmm. it wants to be they want people people want him to wear it but they gave it a character it was a character choice for a reason in the movie Mm -hmm. i like things like that so vibe yeah but this is a movie that is what do they call it fan service and i finally have come to the point where i'm going to defend that so what so what people wanted Snyder verse. They got it and they got it mm-hmm. good. And it was worth the wait. And that four hour movie, I have seen <laughs> way more times than anybody <laughs> should probably have seen it, including the black and white version twice. Okay. Yeah. I just like those characters. So this movie is fan service to everybody who's seen all of these movies up to this point. 
It's a reboot on some level. It's a regeneration on some level. It's an apology on some level for some characters. It's a way of saying, hey, we did not end that storyline for this character that's revered and been revered for decades. And people take this world, these worlds seriously because they mean something. These worlds mean something to people. And the bottom line when it comes to the X-Men and these people who are out there who are different and not fitting into society because they have an ability that either makes people scared of them or jealous of them or whatever it may be. Those are serious things in real life that when people read these comics or watch these movies, they can escape from the realization that, hey, maybe they're more like a mutant in real life than they are just whatever a regular human being is. And I can relate to that. And I feel kind of bashed by society on this issue, or I feel kind of um, hidden because of this issue, or I can't speak up because of this issue. So these movies, although they are fun comic book hero movies, they have a serious underbelly to them. And I think... People need to respect that and understand that these worlds are meant for people who don't, they're meant for everybody. I'm not saying they're meant for anybody in particular. I'm just saying they seem to speak to people who don't fit into the regular society in real life. So that's a serious thing. That's a really yeah. important thing to give a person a name, to put a name to your inability to socially fit in, whatever it may yeah. be. So my it, point to... Okay. Yeah, it, just, it shines a light on something. It's yeah. not that it was it wasn't there and now it is. It's that it was always there and now that light is being shown on it. So yeah. So it my whole sense. tirade, my whole point is that fan service has always been looked at as a negative. Oh, they just did that for the fans, or they just did that for this, or they that they, they found a reason and excuse for adding everything they wanted to add into this movie and they wove it into the narrative so I'm good with it and the redemption that they gave to some characters that I never thought would ever be brought back up again was mm -hmm. amazing and I'll and yeah. I'll name one because we've already talked about spoilers Jennifer Gardner was uh, they found out early on that she was going to be in this film so obviously yeah, I she, did kind of know that one there's others I didn't yeah, know that, yeah I didn't know I didn't know any of the other ones. I knew Pyro yeah. was there, um, yeah. but I just thought that that's interesting that they're choosing that Pyro from that movie, that actor again. That's interesting. What are they going to do with it? And what they did was there are people out there who love Elektra. There are people who love that comic book. There are people who love uh, Daredevil. And that movie is not very good. It's just not. And the Elektra movie wasn't any better. I've watched both of them a couple of times because mm -hmm. I'm interested in seeing somehow in my brain, I think it's going to get better each time I watch it. Or there's something that still allows me to pull me through the movie. Now, the last time I attempted to watch the Ben Affleck, Jennifer Gardner, uh, Daredevil, I stopped because I was like, no, I can't do this anymore. But people mm -hmm. love those characters. And this way, bringing her back, the way that they brought her back and giving her the line, we can finally have the fight that we deserve or whatever the line that she has is, yeah. shows respect to the character that those first two movies might not have. And there are people out there who love that character. So now they're like, okay, thank you for at least showing respect to this character and giving her a justifiable in the narrative of this movie and an understandable ending, but a respectful ending. Now she's yeah. no longer a lecturer from those not so good movies. She's a lecturer from uh, Deadpool Wolverine. I love that. Yeah. And then they did a similar thing with we're in spoilers. We're in spoilers. If you haven't seen it, we're in spoilers. They did a similar thing with Gambit. So <gasps> Cheney Tatum yeah! Channing Tatum was, you know, on the hook, like, you know, in contract to do a Gambit decades. movie. And then yeah, never. Well, not that. I don't know. Yeah, it's decades, like 10 years. A decade. Has it been 10 years? Really? I think so. Because Gambit, what, that was like Taylor Kitsch played Gambit in the X-Men Origins. But, uh, but that Channing was Channing Tatum like was hooked to it before that. Oh, was he really? Yep. And oh he gosh. couldn't do it. So he ended up doing um, Foxcatcher, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay. Wow. So either way, uh, th then that was the kind of uh, that was the kind of payoff for Channing Tatum mm. personally, and mm. also for the character. And it seems like it is very uh, uh, honest to the character in the in the comics, I guess. Even though it seems a little, it's very. It doesn't seem like it. 
his costume would move very well, but you know, I guess that is what it is. But oh, it's comic like book accurate so and, yeah. so much so that people are almost. Uh, it's caused a sort of controversy because people okay. are people see this is why I love this because people I love human beings and people are so complex that they want a Remy LeBeau character a Gambit character mm -hmm. and they want him comic book accurate but then when you see him you're like wait does that work or is that yep. just comic book accurate? In my opinion, I loved everything about it. I love the fact that they used a pink aura to the cards, to his eyes, mm -hmm. to the the, uh, uh, the staff, bow the staff. staff. Yeah, the yeah. bow staff. Yeah, all of that comic book accurate. The dialect was superb. It's so. <laughs> And I knew that that was going to be a running joke from the moment and he opened his mouth. They do not let it go. They don't, and they shouldn't. And there are yeah. some times when he is speaking in the animated series that I've seen that I'm like, what, what? Wait, subtitles, what did he just say? <laughs> and so you have to key into it. Now, it is yeah. extremely ex exaggerated in this, but sure. you asked for it, you got it, and it yeah. was brilliant. And that fight sequence is excellent. He's great in it. And the way mm -hmm. that he attaches the cards to each of them, which we've seen a million times in superhero mm -hmm. movies, where somebody, it happens in the Superman Like a mine, they attach yeah. mines to yeah. people. Yeah, it happens boom. in the Batman movies. It happens yeah. in all of them. And boom, 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 boom. And I love that he smiles and kind of like does that giddy laugh and then flicks the card up to the sniper up on the roof and it explodes. And then he laughs and it goes on. And I'm like, yeah. You can no longer say they haven't done a comic book accurate gambit. There he is. Mm -hmm. And yeah. he pulled it off. I loved it. When he walked through the door, I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> I well, seriously had a geek out moment. I embarrassed me, myself. <laughs> <laughs> I for did. For me, it was, it was the Wesley Snipes blade. Uh, I was shocked. Reveal. Me too. I, that was not even in, that was not on my bingo card at all. Like, well, there there's a no history. Way. Yeah, between those two and that, a bad history. Yeah, yeah, and so I they, like all three of the Blade movies, including the third one. I like it. I yeah, like the third them. one was fine. I and, like and those movies. Patton Oswalt was in it, so I mean, he's yeah. usually in good movies. So you know, but Tasha but Leone, was, I love yeah, some yeah. people. Yeah, you're right, and, and it was it was fine. It wasn't you know horrible, but um, and I've just been kind of like reading through a lot of stuff about Deadpool and about the MCU and about Deadpool going into the MCU and about 20th Century Fox. And really, when you do think about it, Blade was the first uh, it, like Marvel movie that really kind of like made money. You know, it was 98 is when it came out. So a lot of people think, oh, well, it's it's Spider-Man that kind of like Spider-Man and X-Men, you know, kind of like right there, 2000, 2001, they kicked everything off. But not necessarily the reason why they were able to kind of like get the ball rolling on those is because Blade was able to make some money as a, and it was R rated too, wasn't it? Blade. I think so. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That it was able to to make some money, and they started that pipeline. So I thought that was interesting that you you're kind of also you're kind of closing the, and you can definitely tell from like the the final credits that they're closing the book on 20th Century Fox. Period. Now they still have 20th Century Studios, but. But they're closing the book on 20th Century Fox. The fact that they're able to get Wesley Snipes' blade in this movie that is kind of the closing of the book of 20th Century Fox is really cool. And it rated R. Sorry, yeah, I good. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So, um, but the, but that was uh, that was the one that uh, that just kind of like blew me away. And also his subtle line of like, "There has only been one blade. And I love the only one blade." That's kind of like. And but Deadpool Marshall, goes. Ali, Ali especially. Yeah, he looked at the camera. <laughs> I loved Deadpool it. Looked, oh man! But there's supposed to be a Mahershala Ali blade, but that's why been... the connection at, of Ryan Reynolds at Deadpool's reaction to the camera. Yeah, so, and I mean, yeah. but but it's funny because it's like, why would I don't know? It just doesn't it doesn't make sense from a Kevin Feige MCU standpoint that they would want to even bring that up. But it seems like they're allowing. It, it's funny because they're in this this very very tenuous tender part of the in, of Marvel Studios existence where he he even talks about it uh, Deadpool talks about it it's like they needed me and it's kind of like it was more of a sure bet to make a big Deadpool movie than it was to you know spin off into the new mutants too or you know any kind of like young avengers or anything like that so 
that is where maybe they're given a little bit more latitude to say what they want or, or comment on what they want to comment and nobody's going to be marshalling like, no, you can't talk about this. You can't talk about that. You can't bring up the fact that we can't find a director for Blade. You know, that's an issue. They've been through, I think, three directors so far. So, and it's not even close to production. So that that's the kind of stuff where it's like, I would think that they wouldn't want to bring that up, but they did. And it's okay. They think it's worth the laughter to allow that dirty laundry to be aired out i guess so well it's also we all see it we all saw it we all know it and so to not call it out on some kind of level especially if you're going to introduce blade into this to this world uh Mm -hmm. the wesley snipes blade into this world first of all he looks great he sounds great he was cool as hell um a little bit of a a, a want i wanted him to bite somebody though i was wishing for that (laughs) i thought he was going to do that and side note i also wanted uh lecture to wear her little scarf hat or twisty thing that she wears in her hair but she didn't Uh, but but she she does her size she She, does she She doesn't she was badass and i loved everything about the way that she fought she looked great too she certainly did i I don't understand she looks the same because they showed clips of her at the end well she looked yes so there's no clips of her you know in production for daredevil or electric or whichever one but i mean it's like you can't tell no. So and crazy. somebody who looked like that so many years ago looks even better now. So whatever the juices they're drinking, I'm not sure I want it, but uh, good luck with that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so we see it. We we know it. We know the controversy. Wesley Snipe has talked about it. Ryan Reynolds has talked about it. They did not get along. Uh, there were a lot of things changed about that storyline and that script because they weren't getting along. In Blade so, Trinity. Yeah, yeah. So if you're going to bring him back, you have to call it out. How do you do that? How do you do that? You cannot hide it. We we know it. So as soon as he walks through the door, everybody who knows the history somehow on some kind of subliminal level is going, well, what about this? And what about this? And what about, remember when he wouldn't open his eyes for that one shot? So they had to do the CG thing, blah, yep. blah, 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 blah. All that stuff is going through people's minds and they solve it in two or three lines and you realize professionals are professionals, actors are actors. You do what you have to do to get through the day. And that was so many years ago. We grow up. This is how we rectify and we get back into what we do. That's why I'm kind of saying it's a reboot. It's sort of rebooting all of these things, but then putting some of them to rest. Because they needed to mention that there was a Blade movie being made with Mahershala Ali. They needed to put that in there somehow because we know it. We know it. And if you're going to be as meta as this movie is and uh, fourth wall breaking as this movie yeah. is, almost to a fault in my opinion, uh, sometimes the reality of always calling out things. He says at one point, um, I'm going to tell Blake about that. And it went yes. right through people. And it's, it's, there's so, oh yeah, yeah. you're right. It, it, it's too much in a lot of ways. And a that little was one bit. of my questions. Well, one of my bit. questions was, do the jokes allow you enough time to laugh at them? Number one, that one, I only caught that one the second time I watched the movie. And then si- similarly, he's talking about how like there's 206 bones in the body, 207 if I'm watching Gossip Girl. And it's and it's like the, how Rude. how many steps do you have? <laughs> Come on. how many steps do you have to make to to land that joke? Yeah, like, it's not a joke until you go through like okay, he's Ryan Reynolds, he's married to Blake Lively, Blake Lively was the star of Gossip Girl. Okay, it's just like wow. I mean, it's it's a journey, and and it's it, it he lets that line sit for two seconds and moves on to another line, so. To me, it's like you have to be so either they're all there for you to pick up, you know, every once in a while as you're watching it through the fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth time. You can you can do kind of what I did where I'm like, like, oh, yeah, I didn't even hear that line last time, you know, because everybody was laughing at the line that came right before it. Yeah. So that was a problem with comedy anyway, or ish, not problem that that always is. uh, Yeah. yeah. And speaking of live theater comedy, that's also an issue because you have to know to wait, but you can't wait too long because then you break the momentum up of the next joke. But there's immediate feedback, though. Yeah. 
yeah. you get the immediate feedback on but a stage. But that could be really mess you up though, because some uh, days it'll be like laughs before the line, and then you go to say your line, you're thinking, I have to hold this for a split uh, second because it was a laugh before, and they're not going to hear what I'm saying next, and what I'm saying next is important. So there's this long pause, and you're like, they're not laughing. Uh, oh, no. say the line, dick. Tick, tick. Mm -hmm. So it can be an interesting thing to deal with. And I think that I think they did not stray away from overloading this thing. And I I like that. It 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 can be a bit much and it can be daunting and the quips can be a bit and to be graphic and rude i say rude and it's not like rude it's just my way of saying oh that's a little gross for me um <laughs> it can be a bit much the whole yeah. disney turn to the the camera uh, i'm familiar with this but disney isn't i don't want to say what it is because i don't want to i don't want to say that on the podcast but oh, it's okay. a running joke in deadpool the and, drugs the drugs thing yeah sure no not drugs um it, Oh, okay. I think I know what's the when he's at the door. Okay, yes, I got it. Yes, yes, at the door was, to his apartment. Yeah, I was trying to be a. Grown I think you're talking about how he said Disney can't say. Uh, he's like Disney doesn't want us to talk about drugs. You know, doesn't want us to talk about oh, cocaine yeah. and all that stuff. Yeah. And then Leslie Uggams comes out at the end <laughs> talking about as many references to cocaine as. You know what? Yeah, I was this year. I was this day old when I figured out that was Leslie Uggams. I have not put really? that together. Really? Oh, because. Yeah, we just saw her in uh, American Fiction. Yeah, and yeah. I recognize her for that, and I know yep. her history. But for whatever reason, maybe it's the glasses, maybe it's the white wig, I don't know, but I just put that together. I wow. put that together when I was watching a trailer for uh, Wolverine and De or Deadpool and Wolverine. I was like, wait a second. No, <laughs> what? I was laughing at myself that I didn't realize it. That's so funny. anyway, but sometimes the jokes, the, cr the crude jokes, they're – they're funny and they're quippy and they're quick and they come at you, but there's a lot of them in here. Mm -hmm. And I'm no prude. I I don't have a problem with that. I am a little bit shy when it comes to that kind of subject matter. Uh, I'm not good at talking like that, and that's not mm -hmm. part of my nature, believe it or not. Uh, most people really <laughs> like, what? Uh, and I can be on the edge when it comes to humor, when it comes to sexual humor. I can be really on the edge and I have to really watch that sometimes, but over and over and over and over and over. It's relentless in this. So I think if they're going to do another movie with Deadpool, they're going to have to be, be very particular and very specific about those types of jokes because now we're getting used to it. And now it, we're almost desensitized to it to where the crudeness of it sounds uh, more upfront than the funny honesty about the crudeness. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like it, yeah, the, it, it seems to be crude just to be crude. And I'm okay well, with that. Yeah. I'm but a family the, guy fan, <laughs> yeah. you know, I, yeah. but they need to figure out the next step for how this is going to work in the future. Well, and I think the next step is the threading of the needle. That is him being incorporated in other MCU movies because there's a time and place for Deadpool. And when you're in a Deadpool movie, you're in a Deadpool movie and he controls the movie mm. because it's so meta. Like it's his movie and mm -hmm. he knows he's in it and da, 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 da. And he's, he's talking about Kevin Feige to the audience, all that stuff. He, he's dissing on Fox, you know, he's, you know, right to the camera. He's grabbing the camera and breaking it, but he will be incorporated. I mean, there's, we get a little bit of a tease with the, uh, you know, Thor holding his dying body type thing, whether that's real or not, it doesn't really matter, but, but you know that, the, that he will be folded into an MCU movie at least a little bit. And so how does he live in a PG-13 MCU world? What they did in uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine is they sewed his mouth shut. Hmm. So not a good look, Terrible. not a good, not a good idea. The so swords in his arms was the worst though. I was yeah, like, it what? doesn't make sense. I, that, even, even a just let him hold swords. Like, it's not anatomically possible people. Yeah. I mean, how's he going to walk from that point on? It was dumb. It'll There's some sticking some, at the bottom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that'd be funny. A little <laughs> attached thing. Yeah, get um, caught on things when you're walking past. I don't hate that movie as much as other people do, but I have a, a easier uh, suspension of disbelief with these things. I love these worlds, so I'm all about seeing what uh, they make 
how they make it make sense. And they did not in that. So I actually think that's actually, you're right. I think that's a good idea that they're going to fold him into other MCU, the Avengers. He'll eventually team up with the Avengers, even if it's just for a fight. And that little small snippet of him will Mm -hmm. be enjoyable. And they'll find a way to, they'll sew his mouth shut again. I mean, they'll do they something. Yeah, but, well, of but course they, they won't, but they he, they could. He's not, the, he's not the only quippy person. I mean, you know, you, we had whatever it was, fifteen years of of Robert Downey Jr., and I guess we will have more. So if <laughs> I don't get it, but I've often not gotten because he's like going to be Doctor so. Doom. I don't know anything about Doctor Doom, so it's I, you know, whatever. But I don't understand that whole like. It's like. They Talk must have about, a good script. That's all I can keep thinking of. Because how did they get him to come back after becoming an uh, Academy Award winner? you know how much winner? money he's making? Uh, yeah, like $100 million. But still, I mean, there's still- back in points. But That's... still, the first thing on the table that I would discuss if I was ever close to anything would be, what about the legacy we've created? And that's why I would be like, this has to be on the page. Listen to me, like I'm going to be Robert Downey Jr. one day and get to choose. It's never going to happen. But- In my mind, I can think about it. So it has to be on the page. It has to be something interesting. The idea has to, there has to be something that the Russo brothers did that said, hey, look at this, come back to us. Or they had planned this all along. I don't think they planned it all along, but they are getting back. because of Kang Dynasty got dropped. Yeah, exactly. But they are getting back uh, McFeely, I think one of the two, Mark, Marcus and McFeely or whatever. The two, there's two guys that wrote all, all the uh, the Russo brothers uh, movies, including Avengers Endgame and Avengers Infinity War. And they got one of the two guys back to write whatever this Doom generation or what is Doomsday. it called? Doom, Doomsday? Okay. Yeah. Uh, Doomsday. Um, and it is uh, uh, it, it, that I think is going to the the grouping of them with Robert Downey Jr. It will be, it's one of those things where it's going to either be the best case scenario and the only way to go forward, or it's going to be horribly bad. Like it can't be middle of the road. Yeah, you're right. It's going to either be Avengers in game level amazing or just trash. Well, so, I, you know. I, I have often commented on things like that way before I seen the movie and after hearing casting, and I've stopped doing that. I've said that about, I said R.E.M. was the dumbest name for a band ever. I said <laughs> U2, they couldn't think of something better than a letter and a number. That's all I could think of. That's what I said originally when I heard that U2 was the name of a band. No, mm. the history has dictated something completely yeah. different. Now I think it's the <laughs> most brilliant name in the world. So what do I know? So back to uh, Deadpool and Wolverine. I, will, I wanted to tap into this really quick. I, I think it's smart back to the fan service motif that we were talking about earlier. People want to see him in the brown and uh, black costume fighting the Hulk. They want to see him his Mm -hmm. right size. They want to see him on the X, on the cross. They They want to see Weapon X. They want to see... Yes, they want to see that, and they found a way to do it. And I can appreciate it. And back to the spoiler about his uniform or his costume, the yellow and... Uh, blue costume they make fun of it in the first x-men movie um uh, what do you expect uh yellow spandex because when he says when wolverine says to cyclops when they're on the plane you know you go out in these and he goes what do you expect yellow uh, spandex so that's a way they got around it most people did not enjoy those costumes most people did not enjoy the reality of that world that they didn't figure out how to blend the two. So what did they do in this movie? They add it all in there. So now you've seen it. You've seen this costume. You've seen this Logan. You They explained what happened because I was like, how are they going to bring back Logan? He's dead. Like it doesn't make any sense. And there's a timeline problem there too because Logan was set in what, 2049 or 2069? 2019. No, not 2019. I'm sorry. 2029. Is 2029. And this is yep. 2018. 20- 2019 no 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 no. it's 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 about now i mean it's about 2020 still five years he went he he went to 2018 and has been living since 2018 in back in logan's timeline in earth 10,005 which is his the logan's timeline is deadpool's timeline they're in the, the the mutant timeline they're in the same timeline okay yeah i thought for some reason i thought that that was off 
for some reason. I don't know. Okay, well, there you go. Another reason to watch it again. Um, And side note, this is a film I will see again and again and again, and that's always an indication of something that works for me. Not 100% of the time, because I just admitted seeing Daredevil more than once. So, So fan service, why not? After all of these years of these superhero movies, why not? It's like, are we going to ever see Batman in the blue and gray that he is traditionally shown in the comic book? Mm -hmm. We sort of saw it in the Flash movie, sort of, um, with all the costumes in that thing. But you can't really see Mm -hmm. it. Yeah, It had to be pointed out to me, and it had to be emphasized online and circled and blown up so I could see it. And I was thrilled. I was like, oh, that's interesting. That's what Tim Burton's Batman suit looks like in the traditional colors. Why not? So we're going to get the Red Hulk. I, it's at this point, there is no reason. And they're, they're basing all of this stuff on comic book narratives. Mm -hmm. All of those Cassandra Nova, all of these people, they all are comic book based. There is a narrative behind them. There's a story that they have created a lots of, lots of them are variants and lots of them are, they're not really else worlds. They're just variants. Um, so why not? Why not put Logan on the big X and crucify him in front of the skulls? That's what's on the comic book cover. Why not? Mm -hmm. And so I think it's a really smart way to do it. I think it, it, it's people who want to see that, who've kept these worlds alive for this period of time. So I I think that's a good thing. Yeah. So what do you think about uh, as far as like, you know, you're saying that this is, we've codified these characters in film and in this timeline that, that is, has been, has been set aside and said like, this is Wolverine. This is Logan in movies. So the movie Logan being a fitting end to that character, if, if you think that um, a lot of people do, did this hurt that or tarnish that legacy in film of that Logan character? Somebody mentioned that online that, so be it, this is no longer as impactful, but it's not the same. They didn't bring that Logan back. It's a different Logan. It's a different Wolverine. So yeah, and this Wolverine is much more like, is that proper English? Um, A lot more like the character actually is on paper. He is always depressed, always angry, always short tempered. I mean, not that Logan wasn't that before, but he is extremely that in this film. And also that first fight sequence where he digs his claws into the ground and goes crawling over the ground at him. I was yeah. like, what took so long? Has he ever for done that? that before? No. Yeah. Okay. And not that, that I know whole, of. Yeah. I mean, that whole like when he, you know, uh, unfurls his, his knives or his, his claws. And he kind of like does he does that crouch, yeah, uh, which is what Deadpool does at the beginning too, which I thought was really cool when Deadpool puts on his uh, his claws and does the Deadpool crouch, and that's when they do the flashback. Yeah, um, but either way, just that with the 20th Century Fox in the background when they're in the void, brilliant. Talk about like very well framed shots and also fan service, but also just badass like. It looks badass. So it really does. And I was with my 15 year old nephew, and uh, two or three adults reacted to the 20th Century Fox logo. And he's like, What's that about? I was like, Too long of an explanation. I'll explain later. And then we showed him during the credits all of the the Fox Studios, the 20th Century Fox, and that was, or 20th Century. And then we, we kind of explained it on the ride home how it all broke down and how these characters were this and that stuff. And it's hard to explain because it's so much. But I was like, They were making a joke about that. Or they were making a, Hey, this world is now dead. This is now the new world that we're in. Yep. So let's progress onward and upward. And I think that brings us to. Uh, Chris Evans making the the next cameo that I was not expecting at all. Me neither. And then not expecting what happened. Not even close. (laughs) When I saw him, I was like, Captain America's in this movie. This is amazing. So is Deadpool. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, I know. And then they had that funny joke about, he's going to say it. He's going to say it. And he uh, get closer and he gets too close, right? And then he says, flame on. And I was like, whoa. 
because I've also I've also seen those Fantastic Four movies. I haven't seen them. way too many times. No. Um, <laughs> there are, there are many parts I enjoy. Chris Evans being one of them. And so when that happened, I was like, wait, no, smart, really smart. We're getting a new Fantastic Four movie. We're rebooting that, um, or it's I don't really know what to call it because it takes place in 1961 and it's retro but it's also futuristic and i've seen some pictures now and i'm like i dig what they're going for i get it it's very jetson's vibe yeah Yeah. they're paying reverence to the fact that it's one of the first comic book team-ups if not the first comic book team-up if i'm not mistaken so i was like okay good check 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 and check but then Chris Evans gets to do things he would never have been able to do because the first time a cuss word comes out of his mouth, Deadpool goes, because he's still thinking Captain America. Yep. And the fact that he thinks it's Captain America and we think it's Captain America, but it's not, and he doesn't know who this is, is crazy meta. Like that's just who, they must have just taken the day off after they discovered that's what they wanted to do in the writer's room. They just took the next day off because that's too clever. <laughs> Let's go and celebrate. And then the end credit. Yes. I cannot believe that stuff came out of Chris Evans mouth. I was like, Oh, what are you they, talking about? He did not just say he what was I was in he, knives out. Like he was, a, he was a jerk in knives out. Like a super, nah, jerk it's a out. very specific, really etched out. <laughs> profane pornographic description happening at the end of that movie. And to have him say it was just brilliant. It was just absolute like national treasure. Chris Evans is what national, you're treasure, national treasure. Captain America, Captain America who Chris can't Evans. even say damn it or whatever. He can't yeah. say in the one language, movie or, language. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, and then he says what he says. Yeah profoundly genius yeah i was cackling so loud that i did that thing where i'm laughing so loud that everybody turns and looks at me like it was funny dude but it was it that funny yes it was (laughs) so anyway i which i just contradicted myself because earlier i said i think maybe they need to tone that down or they need to find a new direction for that stuff and the new direction at the end of the movie was chris evans thinking captain america but really johnny storm and johnny storm would say maybe not all that stuff, but, but in an R-rated movie, Johnny Storm would say that, right? He would, if out of the four, he would be the one. But yeah. that descriptive, no. <laughs> so anyway, it's hilarious and it's well done and it's fan service and it's a lot of stuff. And I, when you were talking about earlier about when you start to dissect things and maybe this doesn't work and that doesn't work, but really, when you have. Um, What's the sling thing called that you can the, create? The ring, the, yes. Ring the sling or whatever. Sling, sling ring, ring, sling yeah. ring. When you have that, you can go anywhere. When you have Deadpool, you can say anything. When you have these characters that you have idolized and uh, been part of your life for decades, you can put them in anything. So why not? So if the narrative connects and they kept bringing it back, this I'm doing it for these six people in this picture. He says it over and over and over again, at least three times. Um, Mm -hmm. So it becomes a narrative connection, which is might be loosely fitting everything together, but it still fits everything together. And then they give, like I said earlier, Logan some texture and some depth and some understanding of his character that he sort of had in our Logan that we knew movie. And when he's talking to X-23, he explains why he's wearing the costume and what happened and all this other stuff. And I think the key line to his character is when he says, I couldn't let them know I wanted to be there. That's the regret of his life. And so this is why he's angry and this is why he'll take up this battle. And this is why if he saves this world, then he's done some girl good because he hasn't saved his own world. So what other stuff do you need? Like what other connective narrative stuff do you need? It's all there. Mm-hmm. I might be easy to please, but I think it was pretty well done. Yeah. And I think that it was good for all of his emotional beats to have Deadpool away not on screen yeah you need it because because it doesn't jive it doesn't jive with his character his character can't be sincere his character can be sincere but uh his character can't be sincere for a prolonged period of time even when he's in that interview with uh Happy Hogan 
Hmm. Um, who I guess they de-aged a little bit, like the John did Favreau. They? I think they did. I think they de-aged a lot. I think they de-aged uh, Chris Evans too. Um, but uh, but yeah. So with his ha- with Deadpool interacting with Happy Hogan in the 2018 that you were talking about, it's he can he can kind of like open his heart a little bit, but then he has to be like, hey, weren't you the driver, the chauffeur? Like, weren't you the chauffeur for Iron Man? It's that kind of stuff where it's kind of like. You know, or when he gets rejected, he's like, "Pull the car around. I need to go to Shake Shack. <laughs> Rejection makes me hungry." So it's that kind of stuff. Where it's like, yeah. Well, he I mean, can handle. He can't the... be serious. Well, he can when he's Wade Wilson. He uh, can when he's talking mm. to Vanessa. She grounds him, and I don't know what they're doing to her because she looks beautiful. What's that actress's name? She's uh, Marina Bakarin. Gosh, she's stunning. Yeah, I they remember her to... from Firefly. Like she's looked same thing. It's just. It's like all of the other, you know, I don't juice. drink of the juice. juice. They keep saying something about this golden juice. I don't know about it. But anyway, um, yeah. So um, I, I forget where we were going to where we were going to go with that. Oh, uh, Wade Wilson. He, he yeah. that's when the serious heart comes out. And I think tonally it was difficult to switch sometimes in this movie when you when you start to listen to Logan and what his story is. It, it does tonally take a second to adjust. Yeah. And I don't know if that was the filmmakers issues or if it was my kind of like adjusting issues. I think if they had found a way to maybe minimize all of the quips before those moments happen, and I think they did, but there are there's one time that it goes right from something bombastic to that and it just yeah. took a few seconds to go wait and I, any movie that f- finds a reason to just have two characters fight just to fight i'm okay with and they literally say we're just gonna fight here we've got yeah. nothing else to do this is not yeah. moving along the way we- so i'm gonna fight you and that was it and especially they- in a honda odyssey you know <laughs> hilarious so i was trying to figure out if honda actually paid them or if they just i mean because you don't have to get sponsorships for to use something in in a movie you can just use it but movies like this a lot of times will get sponsorships oh look he's drinking a pepsi you know that kind of a thing but the honda odyssey like they really trash on it and then and then in after the fight he's like man this thing is uh it does 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 some something so that that's the part where i have no idea whether they actually got money from honda or not but it it doesn't matter because it works that that scene works and that all that brings me to the music because every fight scene has a piece of music associated with it and i love that stuff i love i mean a score is great and you know even in the mcu like the avengers score is amazing and i love that music and i will you know, every time I hear it, I, it, it transports you back to to those epic scenes. Uh, but I also love incorporating pop music into films, especially for stunt scenes or things like that. Like, I mean, like with this one, where they're using Madonna, they're using ACDC, um, Grease. Uh, Grease, which was the the Odyssey uh, fight. But I mean, that's I love it, and I love it that it's not necessarily always. Um, timed to the music. I love that kind of stuff where things are timed to the music. But at the same time, if you're beholden to that, it it kind of eliminates certain options. You have to you have to be uh, true to the music. But I say that, and during the Hell's Bells uh, void fight, they the music kind of drops out a few times, and I'm like, why is it dropping out? Like, let's, let's keep keep playing. You know, it'll drop out and it'll come back, and it'll drop out again and it'll come back, and it's kind of like, no, just like. Let it play, you know. The maybe uh, they wanted sync, to emphasize whatever they you were did. Saying. They did, but I but the in sync one w- worked really well, you know, at the very beginning when he's using Logan's bones and and he's doing they're doing the bye 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 choreography and all that stuff. I mean, that's a it's perfect. That's the kind of stuff where it's just like, I, I mean, that's that song for for people of ryan reynolds age you know the which is right about i mean he's a little older than me he's like i don't know three four five years older than me but actually he's probably a lot older than me i don't know he just looks like my age which is the juice it's the juice (laughs) I mean, we joke about that, but it's kind of not funny. Um, if you want to, I will look up his age. Um, I think he's somewhere in between me and you. I think, I don't think he he's might 50. be closer to 50. He probably no. is 50. No. I'm telling really? you, man. 
They, what? Look, at, look at Hugh Jackman. How old is Hugh Jackman? He, he is 48. Wait, Ryan Reynolds is 48? 1976. Okay, yeah. Uh, Hugh Jackman, though, is older than him. And uh, Hugh Jackman was born in 68. I'm older than all of them. Well, but I, where I'm going with this is that like they, they both obviously look amazing. And Hugh Jackman went... Uh, straight from uh, Music Man. Was he in, on Broadway in Music Man or something? He was playing uh, whatever the guy's name is in Music Man, the main main dude in Music Man on Broadway or somewhere. And then he went straight from that to shooting this movie. So I don't think he had very much time, but he had to like bulk up for this movie again, which once again, whether it's juice or some other kind of juice or whatever, I mean, he was able to like build muscle on the same kind of muscle that he had for Logan and, and those other movies. But I mean, it's just like, have it, you seen that picture amazing. of him without a shirt on standing to the side and he's kind of doing a lo- uh, Wolverine pose with his claws From down the end of the movie. Is that, was that real or was that CGI added? Is that, you know, the when they're holding hands at the end of the movie. I'm not okay. remembering that. Oh, maybe it did come from the movie. I can't yeah, remember. at the very end of the movie, and and his like his shirt gets ripped off because they're uh, because of all the the matter antimatter that's going. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. It's a, I think it's a publicity shot. This actual oh, photograph, gotcha. but his stomach, it looks like it has rocks in it. <laughs> like his eight pack or six pack, whatever it is, it looks yeah. they it looks fake. And they were showing it on. I think Ryan Reynolds hosted the Tonight Show, and Hugh Jackman was the guest or oh, one of the guests. Smart. And he pulls up this photograph, and he's like, "This is not photoshopped. This is wrong." <laughs> and he's kind of, kind of giving him a hard time. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah, I did right. that. I that's did funny. that. I did oh, that's that." That's cool. Yeah. Well, at the same time, they. Uh, uh, I mean, they're spending hours and hours and hours. With personal trainers too, so they still like, have to do it. They do. But Everybody it's their job, who says so that to me, I still go. They still have to do it. I get like, it. It's no, not I like they it, just go like, into the room and go, "Hey, personal trainer." Boom, boom. You know, no, it's, but that's part of their job, though. Like that's the thing is, like yeah, they can sure. dedicate their eight-hour workday, and, and sure. a healthy person working an eight-hour workday, perfectly fine, great. It's just instead of them, you know, whatever is running lines or. Or, or whatever else it is, you know, co- costume fittings, they're working out. And it's a, it's legitimate work. I have nothing against it. But but you can't compare yourself to that because there's no way that, I mean, a professional bodybuilder, yes, sure. Yeah, that's their job. That's their, It's right in the name, professional. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I mean, I, I can't imagine people trying to be like, man, I don't look like Hugh Jackman. I don't look like Ryan. R-. It's like, dude. Not going Does to. the voice come with that? As soon as you start to try to look like it's Hugh Jackman, really? <laughs> do you talk like this? What? Like, I, hey, I was talking about Ooh, muscles, pecs. That's okay, right. so let's go real, real, real quick back to the needle drops, the music. Um, don't get this misconstrued, meaning not you, just anybody listening. I'm not. This is not a criticism at all, but it is an observation based on a question that went through my mind. How often can you make that shtick work, though? You have to now figure out how to step away from it and figure out the next time. Because it is needle drop after needle drop after needle drop in this film. I don't and have I'm, a problem with it. Yeah, I don't either. I don't either. But it will become, with repetitive things, comes people able to see it. They do it in every in movie. A, in every they Deadpool do, movie. They do. But this one was, this one was, it was a lot. It was, it was a lot, but like the Juice Newton song in the first Deadpool from I love over that. the credits. I mean, like that's great. It's 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 everywhere. I mean, and, and the and song it, choice is important too. Yeah, and when they smash into the radio, it, uh, one of the songs is from The Greatest Showman. From oh, see, the, I didn't get that. Yeah, that's yeah, funny. Yeah, so meta. which is Jeez. actually a pretty good movie. Actually, it's actually uh, well done. I started watching it, and then I was like, okay, eh, it doesn't seem okay. like your type of thing. Um, I like musicals. I just, it, that, that, I just didn't, it didn't grab <laughs> that. Me. I love the scene when they're dancing with the sheets on the roof, him and Michelle Williams are dancing. Oh, so good. Oh, I didn't even know Michelle Williams did it. I don't even think I got that far. Okay. Well, <laughs> that's just fair. Like, you need to take the juice and then watch the movies okay, and then you'll okay. come back all bulked up and with pecs. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I just think that 
they have completed their mission with three Deadpool movies. Now the next step is 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 important. What will be the next step? We cannot do this for the next twenty years. It Deadpool will lose. 18. Yeah. yeah, it will lose. I mean, actually, that sounds kind of funny. Um, the, but the what do you, what do you always say? The shine is off the penny. There, mm-hmm. the luster is still there, and it's still a good looking shiny penny. But we know it's a penny. We know that it's shiny. We've seen both sides of it. Now what? And mm-hmm. it's not anything. I think this this movie or this franchise is responsible for answering. It's just a question that went through my mind at one point. I was like, okay, this was so much fun and so yep. smart and actually extremely well acted. Yeah. Um, you know, Hugh Jackman knocks it out. He really does. And he has the hardest job to be the yeah. serious guy in the movie. I mean, the character no, but No, but he has it. the balance, though. He's the serious guy, but he also has funny lines. So, like, that's much harder than, you know, Mr. Cynical Ryan Reynolds playing Deadpool. Like, that's right. just... They're they're inextricable, inextricably linked at this point. You know, one is the other. That's, and also... I have to mention Emma Corrin uh, yeah. as yeah. Cassandra Nova, and she was also uh, Princess Die in the Crown, and I've seen her in a couple other things, and I'm so you glad You just watched The End of the World. Have you seen that show? No, I haven't. I it's want on to, FX though. or Hulu I or whatever. Want it's really good. Yeah. yeah, I want to. I saw that. And now she's becoming one of those people who, when I see her or know she's in something, I'm interested. And I'm interested in her um, just as a being, just as a person. The mm-hmm. way that she is in the interviews, it's really interesting how she she's very articulate and very down to earth but also very different than your traditional hollywood star if you will and i don't mm-hmm. know if she'll ever be a hollywood star um she has the potential if that's where it goes whatever mm-hmm. that means but she's interesting and moment to moment work in this and she makes the hardest moment in this movie work and it could have failed if she hadn't nailed it when she decides to send them back you're like, mm-hmm. why would she do that? But then she's so overwhelmed and taken back by them saving her that she still has not completely lost every ounce of what humanity she might have if she wasn't raised on this desolate planet and so forth and so on. And that moment could have just been devastating to the movie. It could have been like, well, I believed everything until she just decided to send them back. She was mean. Why did she send them back? But she pulls it off. There's some subtexture and some stuff in her eyes that are like, oh, I'm not fully knowing why, but I don't really need to know why because she just explained it all with one look. I love that kind of stuff. And she also has her own, I mean, she comes, she goes out there too and sends all the Deadpools after them. So like, she she kind of like rethinks it, I guess, afterwards. Yeah, sure. She's kind of like, oh, crap. I mean, I need to go get this thing and I, I can use this thing. So that's, I think that she has her own motivations too. But you're right. She could have totally just killed them. I mean, obviously, the way that she's throwing each of them around like a rag doll. She, yeah. That was awesome. Yeah. When she first beats up Wolverine, I was like, mm, yeah. And the look on her face is like, really? Really, yeah. child? Watch yeah. this. Boom, boom. What and next? Well, kind of like Xavier, Charles Xavier. Yeah. I mean, yeah. just kind of like, yo, are you going to like mess with me? That's not. That's not well, you works. never get to see that side of him unless that's he's being true, manipulated he's by somebody. Yeah. 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 He he believes in the the better side of people, but he also wasn't left as a baby. Um, You know, yeah. in the comic books, they're twins, obviously, and mm-hmm. he kills her in utero because he uh, recognizes the evil in her. So he like kills her. So before he comes out of the womb, he's a murderer. Yep. Wow. Yep. But, but then the rest of his life, he's he's protecting people and teaching people and saving people. But in so. this, de- it might be a great motivation for why he does what he does. And it might be a go. great motivation for why he gets so depressed sometimes and yeah. becomes the James McAvoy version of yeah. Charles. And But in this movie, she's, she's left as a baby. They allowed her mm-hmm. to be born, but they recognized her power whatever the um, and sent her off to the yeah void matthew mcfadden mcfadden Mc, now McFadden. he was in uh succession. succession but i never saw it so like was succession. he a big part of that oh yeah show okay oh yeah he won two emmys he's great his character is uh, sort of similar on some level british uh, or american not british not british okay. um but the kind of goofy um wizard behind the curtain if you will 
okay. sort of. Hmm. It was very similar, and I was like, okay, whoa, dude. Like, I I would want to be in a Deadpool movie too, but well, he's very campy, the- and it works. Yeah. Like his totally, one hundred percent fits. How do you Whereas say his last name? McFadden. McFadden. Why does McFadian? it sound? McFadden. I think it's something like that. Every time I hear it, it sounds funny to me. McFadden. McFadden, I think it is. McFadden. It sounds. What would that be? We just uh, say it like Irish? this: McFadden, and we'll get away with it. He didn't have to work out. He don't care about his pecs. <laughs> <laughs> and also, Emma Corrin's hands shoved up his nose. Oh, uh, that was crazy. That's comic that book crazy. accurate, by the way. Um, really? Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. She usually does one in the chest and then one in the head, usually. Uh, it's like at least a puppet. This, almost, yeah, pretty much. Wow. And that's pretty much how it is presented in this movie, too. And yeah. what's the name of the organization that he works for? TV? Uh, oh, it's the Loki, the TV. Okay, it is. Have you okay. seen Loki at all? Yes, or? I have. Okay, yeah. And it's I was same. like, is this where Owen Wilson works? Yep. I thought yep. he was going to walk by at some point. Well, no, those guys are off grid. So nobody knows what they're doing until uh, the. The uh, sh- sh- uh, what's her name? She was in uh, let's see, Wunmi Mosaku plays B fifteen, and she was like kind of one of the soldiers in the earlier versions of Loki, but um, now she's kind of like a I don't know time judge or whatever she's called. Interesting. She's she's kind of the uh, Gugu and Batha raw level of uh, character from from Loki, but um. Yeah. So, is she the singer in Love Cal- uh, Lovecraft Country? Is she the singer? I have not seen Lovecraft. Country, oh, but it's she crazy. Is in it Ruby Baptiste? She's yeah. in ten episodes, so that's probably her. I think that's her. Yeah, there I liked her in that. Yeah. yeah. So She's overall, good. I mean, this is a fun ride. It's uh, I I went with people who didn't know all the references, and they said that that was the movie did a good job with explaining it. The only other thing I will slightly complain about is, does that dog actually have that tongue? Like yeah, that. that's a real dog from uh, from U- the UK who won uh, Ugliest Dog of 2023. It's a well, cross first between. Of all, it's so ugly, it's cute. So I'm cool <laughs> yeah. with that. I just could not let it lick me like that. I just I'm not Yeesh. I'm 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 a dog person, but me I'm too. not a let me lick me dog person. Uh, I just I, I yeah you yeah, you're a let depends. me lick me yeah, dog person. I, I'll I'm be not okay yeah. With that. Yeah, I don't even, uh, no. I mean, sometimes it's cute and sometimes it's sweet and sometimes it's like really endearing, but that, and he's talking with him as the, the dog was just, I was like, oh. And that first, the first time he does it, the mask is on. So I was like, okay, I could handle yeah. that as an actor. And then later on, it's not. And I was like, oh, yep. no. He's I getting in to. there. Yeah. What is there? I guess it's a she. It's, do- the dog's oh, name's okay, Peggy, she. I think. And uh, like the real dog's name's Peggy. And she's a cross between a pug and a Chinese crested. Chinese cresteds famously don't have a lot of body hair. They have hair on their ears and kind of on their tail, but they don't. Nat- they naturally are kind of like those uh, what Siamese cats or whatever that that don't have any hair. So, uh, so you got that mixed with a pug who has kind of a smushed face. So, you put all that together, and that's what you get. And is the tongue just the way that it is, or is that some kind of I- like? think that that's uh, part disability? of disability uh, yeah i don't know i don't know i mean part of probably part of the breeding and and some sort and of it, jaw issue or something but yeah and this is one dog that looks like that this is yeah. not like a breed of dogs no no it's just a, a single dog so uh wrapping this up i think this movie's fun i think it yeah. is I, I, I like I was saying, people who did know all the references, they thought the movie did a good job at least explaining it in the movie, so they could pick up on it. They didn't necessarily know who Gambit was, but they knew he was important, and they liked his battle sequences. Uh, they didn't exactly understand the whole history of certain things, but the movie did enough explaining that you didn't have to like you weren't lost. And I think that's a hard thing to do. I really do. And I think they pulled it off. And by the way, Sean Levy is the director of this is where I leave you, which is a movie oh, yeah. that got, you love that movie. I kind of do. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of do. Um, and it's now becoming the wait the 10 years rule. I like something and people are like, that movie's not that good. And I'm like, yeah, but I like it. And then like 10 years later, they're like, oh, this is a gem. We should have, we should have taken this a little bit differently and stuff. It's, 
structurally got issues. I'll give it that. But I will watch it if there's nothing else to watch, and I will enjoy it from beginning, middle, and end. I think it's uh, uh, Bateman's best, uh, Justin Bateman's best performance on screen. Mm -hmm. So Jason Bateman, just a small Jason. What I say, Justin? Jason, yes. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, you're right. Um, he also worked on uh, has he's like the kind of Stranger Things guy. He's the executive producer of Stranger Things and got those. The Duffer Brothers kind of got them in there. He did Night at the Museum, like producer of that. So, um, and then he also worked with uh, Ryan Reynolds on Free Guy, which is just okay. Jody Comer is really good in that, but you know. But now he has a billion dollar franchise under his belt, so we'll get to see him more often as a director. So that's a good thing. So overall, it's a yeah, good thing. Cool. Deadpool and Wolverine is is worth it. Yeah, it's awesome. All right. Well, you can check us out on the web at actorandengineer.com. You can go to facebook.com slash actorandengineer. You can find us on X, search for Actor Engineer. And you can find us on YouTube. Uh, Just search for the Actor and the Engineer podcast. We'll see you next time.